What's going on, folks? Welcome to Got Your Back Post Game Edition. Oilers, oh boy, they lay a thumping on the San Jose Shark and Sharks and Connor McDavid. What a great moment. How fitting was that, that it was Zach Hyman burying that goal? Fans gave him a nice ovation. Now just one of four, soon to be five NHL players to have reached that milestone. Struddy sitting in the chair. Uncle Struddy getting set to break it down. And Rob Brown will be joining us shortly as well. As always, I'm coming at you from our long shot studio here in Sherwood Park. Sherwood Park's cheapest 20 ounce pint. Great spot to go play a little golf and watch a little hockey. As always, our show is presented by our proud title sponsor, Sherwood Buick GMC. You know, we've been talking about the amazing goals that they set for themselves. Knocked it out of the park last month because they know what they're doing, right? Streamlined sales process. They respect your time. If anybody you know or you are looking for a new or used vehicle, they're definitely worth your time. 10 Automall Road is the address. Go see the great crew at Sherwood Buick GMC. Fantastic vehicles too. I have the Sierra 1500 Elevation trim. Just a spectacular truck. Love it. Highly recommend it. Go to gmcpod.com to see all that they have to offer. Uncle Struddy is ready to roll tonight. How are you doing, bud? Good, good. Yeah, really good. Uh, I had a lot of sympathy for the San Jose Sharks. It, it was oh, That was a thrashing boy. of, of orgasmic proportions. It was unbelievable how bad that was. Uh, uh, clip that, Steve. Clip that for his yeah. intro. <laughs> yeah, a thrashing do. of orgasmic proportions. Is that what we just got out of you? Uh, it was. It was. I. You could tell from the get go. From from the first shift, okay. they came here for the beating. They came and they. It's that's a that is a team that is not NHL level. It yeah, is bad. my God. End it. And just, I just it was like watching uh, Apollo go against Ivan Drago and Rocky IV. I just wanted to throw the towel in. I was like, we're done. <laughs> we're done. You know what I loved about that game, man? Right from the first period, like before it was even 2 nothing, Skinner was like, would not freeze a puck. He was like moving it along. Yeah. The refs weren't even calling penalties. They were just, there was an, there was a too many men on the ice that was so obvious tonight. And they're just like, eh, just let no. it go. Just let them play. Like, keep it moving. Let's get everybody out of here at a decent time. They just just keep it, it, it. There was nothing that was going to change the outcome of this game for San Jose or for the Oilers. It was it was just a complete thrashing on on every level. And I mean, that's where the Sharks are at, right? And I, I've been on teams like that where you're at that. Have level. you been on a team that bad? Come on, pretty damn close, man. They got yeah. Which I'd year? Say, I don't know. The new I made my last year with the Oilers. They got Nugent Hopkins. <laughs> Like that was a pretty bad. You think that's comparable? I covered that team. I don't recall it being that bad. Well, by the end, was there were so many injuries. There was a lot yeah. of injuries. Like they, it's, I mean, they they had like it was just bad. It was so bad that team, and not my team, but this Sharks team was so so bad. Just just get it over with. Like I I, I couldn't imagine. I felt so bad for those kids. KD on the chat in with MVP, MVP, MVP. Edmonton fans are the absolute best in the league. Did you see his smile and wave to us all? He's not leaving, folks, says KD, prognosticating the contract a couple of years down the road. It was a great moment for Connor McDavid tonight. There's a couple of really interesting things to dissect from that. Uh, and Brownie has joined us. Brownie, how are you, pal? I'm very good. I'm like everyone else in Edmonton, excited about the way the game went. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> boy, oh, boy. Struddy was just uh, reminiscing about how bad his Oiler team was that earned the franchise Nugent Hopkins, comparing that to the Sharks. You ever been part of anything like whatever that mess is they're going through right now, Brownie? Uh, no, not even close. I mean, I, I played for four good junior teams, and I played 16-year pro. Missed the playoffs twice, and both times were on the last game of the season. That that was, a, I mean, that was a, a terrible hockey club tonight. It was. Uh, they, there might be two players on that team tonight that could make the Oilers. Um, they probably had nine or ten American Hockey League players on that team. They had a combined five games of NHL experience in their goaltenders combined. Uh, it was. That was just tough night. It, it was it was it was a rough night. I fe I fell from I fell for that first goalie, Devin Cooley. 
I yep. mean, just hung out to dry. I mean, this guy playing his sixth ever NHL game or whatever it is, absolutely hung out to dry. So this was a game that I think the referees realized that right, we ain't calling penalties. We're going to try and wave <laughs> off every icing. Let's get this thing over as quick as possible. But to answer your question, I've never been on a team that bad. And I covered the team. I was working for the Oilers when Struds was on the team. And even at the end of the year when Struds, when the Oilers had all those injuries, they still were not near as bad as that team we just watched today. Hmm. Bob's your uncle says nine to two karma. We are all born and die with one foot on each side of the scales of destiny, which altruistically define our fate. Some deep stuff from Bob's your uncle early on in the show. tonight. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. They're just a bad team. Like they're just, they're just bad. And even like, bad. even look at some of the injuries bad. they have. It's like, it's like Logan Couture yeah. helps for sure. Matt Benning. But it's it's not like yeah. they have a ton of NHL guys just sitting on the sidelines right now. You know, like I think it's gonna be painful for a while, boys. Oh. It's gonna be a painful ride for Dark. a little while. Okay, enough Dark. about the San Jose Sharks. We got Connor McDavid <laughs> hitting a monstrous milestone, a meaningful milestone. So let's break it down. Courtesy Adrenaline Diesel, Edmonton's heavy duty diesel truck repair shop. They've got a number of drop-in ready diesel engines for purchase, installation, or conversion. They also have a couple of restored trucks for sale, a 2018 Peterbilt, a 2010 International Pro Star, and a 2015 Volvo VNL. Drop in to see all those beauties. 13019, 151st Street, Northwest, here in Edmonton. We thought he had it. Looked like he might have <laughs> had it pretty much on the first shift struts. I thought he did. Tom Gazzola next to me had to inform me. I think that might have hit a stick. Yeah. Uh, but right from the right from the get go, the I was impressed with the fact that the Oilers, like this was not they, they lost back to back games. They showed up ready to go, ready to take care of business in the first period. Leave no doubt at all. McDavid leading the charge, Struds, and you just knew this was going to happen. You could feel it. Yeah, they they you know I think they recognize the quality of opponent. And they and and when you're playing a team like that, you come out and just strangle them. You don't even punch them. You just grab them and strangle them and choke the life out of them. That's what they did. They just they they didn't give the sharks a chance to breathe. Um, and it was just repeated abuse for two periods. In the third, I think everyone just agreed to just get through it. But um, yeah, the, the owners took care of this game the way they needed to, Brownie. Well, the San Jose Sharks, as we said, are a bad hockey club. And they just ran into Edmonton at the wrong time. They're playing one of the top four teams in the NHL, the Oilers are, coming off of back-to-back -back losses and are getting their superstar back after three days out of the lineup. It was like the worst possible scenario for the Sharks. Yeah. And as you said, Strudge, the, the Oilers said, you know what, we can end this game in the first 20 minutes. We do not want to have them have any belief that there's any opportunity for them to stay in this game and it was 4 nothing after 1. It could have been 8 nothing after 1. Yeah. The, the San Jose yeah. Sharks had... And it wasn't they just didn't have an answer to Connor or Leon. They didn't have an answer to Holloway or Fogel or Perry or McLeod or Yanmark. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers from top to bottom just, as you said, boot stomped them. And it, to the point that, you know, I'm, I'm a former pro player sitting up there going, oh, let, let this end. Please let oh, yeah. this end. I just felt oh, yeah. sorry for that other team. And it's not and it wasn't as though there was a lack of try. There just was a lack of skill and experience that San Jose did not matter how hard they tried tonight, they were they were gonna get it was gonna get ugly and the Edmonton's made sure of it. So it almost got in the way of a proper celebration for McDavid's 100th assist. <laughs> I thought this was so telling on a couple of fronts. So McDavid gets the assist. Hyman gets the goal. The building is going nuts. Everybody's going crazy. The Oilers had stopped high-fiving down the line, I think, after the sixth <laughs> goal, right? Out of respect yeah. for the opponent. You just stop doing that. You stop celebrating. But this was a moment that needed to be celebrated. So they score this goal, and McDavid kind of meanders over towards the bench like, eh. Hyman grabbed him and shoved him down the line like, we are doing this. <laughs> and it gave McDavid the moment with his teammates. But Struds, in that moment, McDavid was thinking more about showing class to the Sharks 
than, you know, enjoying that moment for himself, which I think tells you all you need to know about where his head is at. Well, let's be clear. The reason they stopped doing the high fives is that it was turning into a bag skate for him. Yeah. They were they were just going up and back <laughs> over and over. It's like, we're done. We're done. We got to save our energy. Um, no, but like for that's who Connor is. And I think that's, you, you know, but every great leader would, would understand and recognize that moment. But I also love that his team had Hyman shoved them and say, Hey bud, you're doing this. And then it seemed to, he relaxed, you know, after that he's on the bench, everyone is hugging him and, and uh, he was smiling and you rarely see that from Connor McDavid. We saw it when Hyman scored his 50th and then really that's it. I think we saw it one time when Connor scored, wasn't it the game winning goal against the flames a couple of years ago? Like you don't see that from the big guy very often. So I loved it. I love the response. It's a pure, and I think it shows that he truly does love being a hockey player and was is proud of this accomplishment, which is incredible, incredible accomplishment. Only four other people now him, and I'm guessing one other guy will probably get it pretty soon. But Brownie, it's just you love seeing that from star players. I love seeing that that honest raw emotion. Well, one hundred percent. And I was asked tonight, you know, do you think Connor realizes? what he's accomplished. And I go, yes, the great ones know the history of the game. They know what stats are out there, what records are out there, who's setting them. And when they are mentioned or they accomplish something that very few have, they understand the importance of it and how big it is in the history of the game. And McDavid wouldn't, I mean, he did show the smile. We rarely see that, but this is something that he's going to sit back and, and, when he's in his alone time and says that, you know what? Or Gretzky, Lemieux, not, not just Hall of Famers, but they could be the three best players that ever played the game. And Connor McDavid is now one of those. So, yes, uh, so you Kucherov love seeing soon. someone. Yeah, it will be Kucherov. And Kucherov's, Kucherov's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the, he will go down as one of the greats in this league, and yeah. he should. But, yeah, Kucherov has a good chance of doing it in his next game. Uh, and that's five players out of all the players that have ever played in the NHL. So uh, a pretty cool moment for Connor McDavid. And but it, you know what it reminded me of too. So it's a ninth goal, and the, you're like, okay, how do you celebrate? It was like when Connor Brown scored earlier this year when it was at like the seventh or eighth goal in a game, yeah. and the place erupts, and the opposition yeah. team's like, are you kidding me? Why is this going on? crazy? Yeah. It's like. And then someone whispered, oh, that's his first of the year. And like, oh, okay, I understand now. <laughs> Let's get to the Wee Wisconsin Sound Box, where they're offering $200 off their Fantech HEPA filter system. Be proactive to keep the air in your home clean, because if the forest fires hit again this year, and we really hope that they don't, but if they do, remember how it gets outside, right? It can be tough. It can be hard on the lungs, hard on the system. But this system from Weiss Johnson will help you feel comfortable in your own home as you should. And it'll really help for those with respiratory issues. So contact them for this amazing deal. A couple hundred bucks off that Fantech HEPA filter system. Weiss Johnson.com today. A little slow, Steve. A little slow. I need, that, I need that jingle in there snappy as soon as I finish talking. Uh, let's go to Zach Hyman first because we just talked about the way he forced McDavid to celebrate down the line with his teammates. Well, I don't know if he was going or not, but I didn't want to make sure he did because it's, uh, I mean, even though it was the ninth goal, it doesn't matter. Like, that's that's just like a historic moment, right? It's a, it's a milestone that only three other guys have gotten to, and those three guys are Hall of Fame once-in-a-lifetime players, right? So to be in that kind of company um, is pretty cool and special and doesn't happen often. So um, I think he deserved to have his moment there and regardless of what the score was. What a special season that these two players are having together. A couple of incredible milestones for both of them. Let's hear from McDavid now. You know what? It was not. It was not not something that I don't think he ever set out and said, "Oh, I want to do this." It was kind of just happened naturally, and and uh, had that weird stretch where I didn't score any goals, but had you know a bunch of assists, and you know that was kind of when I was made aware of it, and and um, you know like I said, not something that you you set out to do or whatever. It's just a product of playing with some really good players, playing on a good team, and 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 putting a lot of hard work. He's so humble and chill about it, Brownie. What do you think? How do you think that resonates with the rest of his team when a guy is that good? And and you have perspective on this because you played with one of the greatest of all time. 
when a guy is that good, knocking down these milestones, yet pretty humble about it and pretty laser focused on the big picture, how do you think that resonates in there? Uh, it resonates well. Uh, you appreciate his brilliance, and then you respect his humble. Uh, to me, it's like I, I played with Mario, and he was a, he was very quiet. He wasn't a guy that talked much in the dressing room. When he spoke, it was big because it was mm-hmm. rare but never, ever banged his own drum. I've played with other players that bang their own drum, and you're like, I'm so sick of you talking about yourself. I'm like, but but the great ones, if you are, and that's what I've always said in anything, in any sport, in any part of life, if you have to tell people how good you are, well, you're not that good. So if you let your, let your actions show what you're, what you, who you are. And I think that's what Connor McDavid does. He just, he allows his actions to show his greatness. He doesn't have to tell people. He doesn't have to walk around, strut around. He simply goes about his business and lets others do the talking for him because we are all amazed at, at, at what he's accomplished. And again, this is he is in the rarefied air of the Gretzkys, the Lemieux, the Bobby Orrs, all of those greats. And I, I, I think we have to continue to appreciate him on a nightly basis because at one day we're all going to be sitting back telling grandkids Oh, yeah, I watched the night that he got his 100th assist. Oh, I remember when he scored his 60th goal. And hopefully one day we'll be telling our grandkids, I was there when when, when Connor McDavid lifted the Stanley Cup over his head. So uh, we are witnessing greatness on a nightly basis. And you just admire him as a, a player and respect him as a person. Yeah, I mean, Brownie just nailed it. You, you, just, you don't have to talk about yourself. Everything he does talks about it. But I, I think these are things that... He's put so much work in, like the work to, to have that to 100 points didn't start September 1st. It started the end of last year. It started two years ago, five years ago, seven years ago. Like he, he's been building towards this incredible career he's had for years. So it's, I, I think he actually expects himself to do special things. It's not really that special when you're expecting that. I mean, like, you know, for, for a lot of us, we, you know, run five kilometers, you feel great about yourself, but for a marathoner, it's nothing. <laughs> well, he uh, found appreciation night too, by the way, and kudos to the fans. Gave him a nice long yeah. ovation and an MVP chant to follow. And McDavid, uh, you know, said a lot of nice stuff about the fans after the game as well. So pretty cool moment for him to enjoy at home. I thought that was cool. At home on fan appreciation night, uh, I thought there was some meaning in that having happened as well. Um, in our next segment, we're going to dig into other performances tonight and other things that we liked, uh, line combinations, that sort of thing. But I do, before we uh, wrap up our breakdown and get to our relentless player of the night, uh, I think we should talk about Evan Bouchard here, guys. Uh, cracks the 80-point plateau. Just an unbelievable offensive season here from Evan Bouchard. The evolution of this player has been really impressive to watch. Confidence has been such a huge factor in his development as opportunity came his way and he's embraced it. And sure, we, we talk about some of the holes that are in his game here and there. He is not the perfect defenseman, but Strud's offensively, this is a juggernaut of a season from Evan Bouchard. And this guy is going to get paid when it's he, time. He <laughs> is. Yeah. There, he's going to get a lot of cash. There's no doubt about it. And I think when, you know, there are those out there that suggested the orders mishandled him throughout the uh, uh, COVID. And, and yeah, and carried him around, and I, you know, those people probably aren't quite as vocal as they were. No, before. no, 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 no. I still uh, maintain it. Drugs. <laughs> I was one of the loudest ones. I no, can't not you. you. Dragged him around on a taxi squad that entire year, rather than letting him play in the American Hockey League. It was oh, insane God. that they did it. It was a ridiculous decision, and I stand by that. He's done all of this in spite of the way they handled him that year. Continue. Remove, remove the fish hook from your your mouth. I just oh, got that- you. Did you troll me? <laughs> I'm such a sucker. Damn it. That always happens to me. Oh, God. Oh, no, I anyways. get on my soapbox, hey? I just... Yeah. Can... Well, I can't wait till we hit about Halloween, the next episode or the next uh, segment. But anyways, <laughs> just, just to I get through it quickly. Like it. Yeah. I mean, he's 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 going to continue to evolve. Like, he's not a finished product. His offensive game is great. You can still continue to evolve and add, add pieces to your defensive game. So... Um, but you know, he, he, he really is an offensive machine out there and, uh, he's going to get a lot of cash. He's at 3.9. It's going to be, I think it's going to be doubled at least. Oh, buddy. Keep going. Keep going. More than doubled. Oh yeah. 
It starts oh, with an eight I, all day I long, think though. So. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, think it, it'll eight be over eight. All day. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the They're thing is, with, with Devin Bouchard, with Strides, and you'll know it, it, it more than anyone being a defenseman, you can't teach offense. You, yeah. He can get better defensively. You can teach a guy to be better defensively. You can teach him how to box out better, how to use his body better, how to defend better, make better reads defensively. Those things can be taught. And I mean, you're never he's never going to be Nicholas Lidstrom. Oh, it, it's not in his DNA, but he can become a better defense defenseman. But you can't teach the offensive ability that he has. You can't teach a defenseman say, all right, we're going to teach you how to shoot better this year. We're going to make better passes, and you're going to become an 80-point defenseman. You're going to become a point-a-game guy. You're going to get 20, 25 goals. You can't teach that. Evan Bouchard was born with that ability, so uh, he gives the Edmonton Oilers something on the back end that very few teams in the National Hockey League have, and that's an offensive defenseman that's going to put up a point a game and is going to be in the 20s for goals. So uh, I think Evan Bouchard, I think I mean, Arnell Nurse making over nine. Evan Bouchard. Yeah, I, good point. I, I mean, it might, it might. By the time he's done, it might be a ten that starts his. He might be oh. making ten million dollars here. Oh yeah, I, yeah, Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can take it that far, but you never know, I guess, right? If you're willing to go to market, I guess you just you never know. Um, yeah, that's that's a stressful conversation for Euler fan for another day, Brownie. But uh, tip yeah, of the to, cap to uh, Evan yeah. Bouchard for having way a great ruin season. Ruin a night, Brownie. Way to go. Yeah, bring everybody <laughs> down, man. man goodness <laughs> sakes, man. Jeez. Uh, okay, let's get to our relentless player of the night, brought to you by You Can Youth Services. If you're looking to hire entry-level staff for your company, You Can Youth Services trains youth in pre-employment skills to help get them ready, willing, and able to join your team. Check out www.youcan.ca for more information. Struddy, who gets the Kyle Dubay Award tonight, buddy? Well, they call him McLovin, Warren Fogle. This guy was all over. I've never uh, seen anyone try that hard to get a, uh, a hat trick. <laughs> he was going out there. It was like a Ryan Smith's last shift. Just leave him out there for 10 minutes and hope you get one. Uh, everyone else was standing still, and he was buzzing around like nobody's business. Um so it, it, it kind of reminded me of the uh, the, uh, the the dad at the uh, you know U seven level with the ill fitting tracks who was just abusing everybody else, <laughs> trying to show his wife he still got it. Uh, uh, how about that? How about that one where he had the chance? Yeah, and he kind of fanned on it, and he yeah. was like, "Oh!" And he looks yeah. to the sky; he's all rattled. It's like nine one, and the Sharks players are looking at him like, "Are you for yeah. real, man? Like, yeah, buddy, really?" Are you- do, 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 do you get a free like a free hat if you score 10 goals like it's just like but I, I I'm, I'm having fun but I get it I get it so Warren Fogel uh you know great great night and great season for Warren I think he's one shy of 20. I'm sure he'll want to get that 20th uh look nice when he tries to sign a new contract this summer absolutely that is our you can you services relentless player of the night all right we're gonna take a quick break here when we come back we're gonna dive into some of the other performances that we saw tonight what'd you think of the top two lines could that be the matrix that's four shows in a row that they use heading into the postseason (laughs) we shall see and then of course the best segment on the podcast brownie points is coming up next as well stay with us The fastest growing male grooming company on the planet just got even better. The Backscape 2.0 with a revolutionary friction fit handle makes the razor easy to pop in and out to shave not only your back, but anywhere on your body. And those hard to reach spots just got even easier with the new ergonomic design. Backscape's new titanium shave head makes for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Backscape 2.0, stay smooth, gentlemen. On paper, my life looks exciting. In reality, not so much. Every day, it's same old, same old. Clock in, clock out. Then I discovered Play Alberta. I can play casino games anytime. Bet on any game. And buy lottery tickets anywhere in Alberta. I think my spleen is ruptured. Oh, hook, line, and sinker, Struddy. You got me so good, man. That kills me. I hate that. 
Well, that, that one year between you talking about that and Jason Greger talking about pull your RV stick, I, 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 I just bang my head off the desk. Like someone end this. I cannot listen to this right now. Like it was sticks too long. Got to He should be in the minors. I'm like, Oh my God, please just end it. <laughs> oh, you got me so good. I hate that about myself. I bite on that shit all the time. Like I've had people text in things on the chat and I go off and they were trolling me too. I am gullible as Passion. could be. Yeah, Passionate guy. Passionate, sure. <laughs> time now for takeaways brought to you by Martin Motorsports. Spring is here and it's the perfect time to get ready for your summer adventures. And what is better than spending summer on the water? Find the perfect boat for you and your family from surf boats, pontoon boats, fishing boats, sea doos, and sea doo switches, plus all the water sports gear you need. Visit them in store or online. MartinMotorsports.ca to view their boat inventory. Chris from Martin Motorsports was one of about three people that text me after McDavid got his assist and said, put him in bubble wrap, shut him down. Were you guys thinking the same thing that uh, they would back McDavid right off? And some believe maybe don't even play him anymore for the rest of the year here, but I think he's going to keep going, guys. I think they're going to keep playing him here, at least one of the next two. Brownie? Um. I think he'll play. He wants to play. I mean, tonight was a no-hitter. I mean, the only way you're going to get hurt out there is if during the Zamboni time, one of the girls pushing the shovels ran into somebody because the San Jose <laughs> Sharks players weren't. So, so there's a yeah. He's going to play. He's got to play at least one more game. Uh, he he'll want to. Um, the game against Arizona. Arizona not a very physical team either. And then the Colorado game is going to be a nothing game. There might not be a single star dressed in that. That at one point was going to be the game everyone's excited for. They might not have any of the best players in the world in that game because it'll mean nothing to either team. But Connor McDavid will play one of the last two. I would imagine Leon will play one of the last two. Um, but tonight's game, they could have played could have played Connor thirty eight minutes. No one was going to touch him on the ice. For two reasons. One, San Jose is not physical. And two, no one on San Jose could catch him. Yeah. Good points. Yeah. You know, post game uh, is interesting. And I'll block talk about depends on what Vancouver does. Um, you know, if, if they win, uh, then it's they're not catching them. If they lose, then maybe it's a different conversation. So, mm -hmm. you know, if they do, if they do lose, maybe there's an opportunity that they play them. Um, against Phoenix and just kind of see how that goes after that. I don't, I don't know. It'd be, it's, I think it's a long shot that they get there. Uh, but what other players do you sit down? Like, do you give Ekholm a night off? Is if you can, guy? yep. I would expect a Philip Broberg recall tomorrow. Yeah. yeah I said, I'd probably set Ekholm out over at Nurse. But, like, tell you the minutes, you know, there, there was guys, there was really, yeah, take the D-man out of it. But, uh, you know, everyone was kind of around that 12 to 15 minute mark. So can you do that again tomorrow? And then, you know, do you do it against Colorado? Because uh, I think it's important to get your third and fourth liners a little extra ice time here too, get them feeling good about themselves. Evander Kane out of the lineup tonight. Um, assume that he's nursing something or banged up a little bit. Played almost 20 minutes the other night. I guess part of the question with Kane is like, hasn't necessarily been playing the big minutes this year, right, guys? He hasn't been piling up those 18, 19, 20 minute nights, which in the playoffs, if you want to be in the top six, you're probably going to have to do. And he did the other night. Now he was out of the lineup tonight. So, it's interesting. You know, I've maintained all along that I felt for this team to get to where they need to go, they they have to have a Vander Kane in the top six and playing well. And, and I still think that's absolutely crucial. But, Struds, I'll ask you, uh, what did you think of the top two lines that we saw tonight, keeping the opponent in mind? And could you see that being the opening night top six? Yeah, I, I have a really hard time taking anything from this because I think Bakerfield sure. might have won this game. So... Yep. But the the idea that like I think Henrik is very similar to Newt. She's a smart player, responsible both ends of the ice. So I like the idea of Henrik beside McDavid because it's very similar to Nuge beside McDavid. And he Henrik scores again. Where he scores goal right in front of the net like that. That guy figures he knows where to go. Um, so I like it. But with this setup that you have, there's no room for for Kane. And then Kane drops down to the third line. Is he with McLeod and Perry? Um, do you throw? You know, yeah. Hallway on his off wing, whatever. I don't know, whatever it looks like. Um, that's probably how it shapes out. But yes, to answer your question, yes, I do like the way those two lines look because I think there's balance and kind of the, the the right kind of mix on on both lines are are very quite actually quite similar, Brownie. 
Well, I, I agree with you with the fact that take zero out of this game. They played a minor league team. Someone said it was like an exhibition game. I said, well, actually, the Oilers would have got more out of a practice than they would have got out to, out of today's game because the practice would have been harder because they would have been playing against each other. I don't think if Evander Kane plays next game, I don't think the top six are going to be the same as they were tonight. I just don't. I I think they will mix the lines all up again. Mm. Um, I, I just, I mean, I mean, there's you can't take anything out of this game. Henrik had a, a fantastic game, but they played against a minor league team and he was playing with the best player in the world. So I, yeah, I, I take nothing out of this. And I think that if Vander Kane plays next game, you will have, a, well, actually, you're going to have completely different lines anyways because Connor might be out of the lineup. Leon might be out of the lineup. But to start the playoffs, first playoff game, I do not think these will be your top six. Really? Nope. Okay. So why, why do this tonight then? I mean, they only have so many games left. And well, I think we would all agree that the search for chemistry is ongoing, right? In the top six, the search well, they, for lines that are well, going to work is Kane. ongoing. Yeah. Well, they didn't have Kane in the lineup. So they had, he said, we had to move things around. I didn't have Kane. So we put Nugent Hopkins with Leon. So there was a twosome. We could put Hyman and McDavid together. So there was a twosome. I mean, that's what Knobloch said. Brownie, Kane I mean, if not being available for... doesn't affect either of those decisions. Kane not being available, he was never a, a, a he was never in the top six. So Knobloch still made these very conscious decisions to move some guys in his top six and to try something. And by the way, this is similar to what they were running when McDavid got hurt in the Calgary game. So he's going back to this. Yeah, I, well, you, you asked me what I thought. I don't think these will be your top six. I just don't. I don't mm-hmm. think they'll be the top six to start the uh, to start the playoffs, and because you have to figure Kane in the equation. Yeah, interesting. Struds. So I think Please. I, yeah, I think ahead, I think Nugent Hopkins will be I think Nugent Hopkins will be back with Connor McDavid. Yeah, and I don't think so. I think that like I I asked Chris Knobloch about this earlier today, and he said if we want to balance things out, then having Nugent Hopkins with Drysidel. And Kane and and or Hyman and McDavid together is kind of the best way to do that. So to me, he's searching for a way to balance out the lines a little bit and not have to load up one line the way he has been. And I my feeling here is he might have found something that he likes. Again, not reading too much into San Jose because I, I understand the quality of competition tonight, mm-hmm. guys. But Struds, it would seem to me that a coach that's searching for something that will work with his top six forwards might have found something here. And it wouldn't, uh, you know, and I asked him tonight about it and he said, you know, we'll have to take another, take another look at it. I think he wants to see it more, but I think they might've found something here that they were looking for Struds. They might've. Yeah. And, and, but again, I I just, without Kane alive, I have a hard time believing because I even said, I think it was. But Which what does game? it change? Like Kane drops into Holloway's spot. Holloway either right. bumps down or comes out. It doesn't have to change that much else. Right, but I, I think who's but feeding you, the puck to Kane? Who's feeding the puck to Kane? Well, he's got he's got Perry and Ryan McLeod. I mean... Yeah, that's not... I, I, exactly. No disrespect to those guys, but it's not Connor or Leon. So if you want him to be a scorer in the playoffs, I think he needs help. Someone to someone that can help feed the monster, right? So let me ask you this, guys. Um, do you think that he's building these lines more to play against Kings or Vegas? Because so basically, am I saying or what I'm saying is, would you load up one line if you're against the Kings and spread it out against Vegas? Go ahead, Brian. This, this feels like a Vegas kind of lineup to me. Well, I mean, Vegas holds their own fate now. Vegas has two bad teams they have to beat, and if they do that, the Oilers play against the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round now. That was a huge loss by L.A. today. Um, I, I just I, – I go along with what Strud said. And, I mean, Shogger, you're the one that keeps telling us Kane has to be in the top six, mm-hmm. and he needs to be a beast. If he's playing with Perry and, 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 and uh, McLeod, I mean, that line's not going to create a lot of offense. It isn't. And – all of a sudden, you're taking, you're taking, you said, Kane, up to 18, 20 minutes a night. That line's down now at about 14 or 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I thought Kane had been playing well as of late. And we talked in our last podcast how we thought Kane had earned a right to get back up into the top six. So yeah. I, I just don't see 
I just don't see that being the top six. And, and, and having said all of this, the Edmonton Oilers, what they start with in the first period of game one, yeah. as soon as they <laughs> fall behind, it goes back to the other lines anyway. So yeah, for sure. it doesn't really matter. All it is is for reporters to sit and talk about on podcasts. It really, they have had 28 different line combinations in the last three weeks. And they'll probably have 28 different line combinations in the first yeah. round as well. See, I don't know, though. I don't know, though, Brownie, because I think... You know, I think about teams I've covered in the cup final over the years, and, like, there isn't a ton of change for, for the teams yeah, but, that are rolling and Shonda, playing well. Like, those lines... Those, those are teams that... Yeah, but those are teams that have those lines the whole year. Marshawn mm-hmm. and Pergeron played together the whole year. Crosby mm-hmm. and Kunitz played together for years. The Oilers haven't done that all year long. The last number of years. They never do that. So it's not like... The, at the beginning of the playoffs, the Bruins or the Blackhawks or the LA Kings, they decided, okay, here's what the, we're going to roll with in the playoffs. They were rolling with them in September. The Oilers aren't, I don't think the Oilers say, okay, here we are in game 80. We figured it out. So this is what we're going to roll with the whole playoffs. That's not the way they're coached. And that's not the way this team does things. They will have a number of different lines depending on who they're playing and what the score is in any game. Hmm. So you think they can go on a deep run without lines settling in? That it's okay yeah, for it to 100%. sort of be all over? Yeah. I think it looks 100%. different series to series. Struds? Different series to series. I really think it'll be different looks series to series. Yeah. I think you make a great point though, Struds, about you, you know building lineups for different teams. And Knobloch yeah. has always talked a lot about things being opponent driven. Decisions yeah. that he's made in his lineup have been opponent driven. Leon and Connor together, Leon and Connor apart, different D yeah. pairings, even. I think there's been adjustments mm-hmm. that have been made. So he tends to focus on that a little bit. And I think this formation we see tonight, I think, you know, is probably more with Vegas in mind. Um, and it's interesting. I haven't flip flopped on what I've been saying about Evander Kane. I'm just reading what's happening in the moment. So his minutes go up last game and his impact has been good, but all of a sudden he's, he, he's not playing. And so I'm wondering if, you know, if their concern is, can, is he going to be able to handle the minutes of playing on one of those two lines and playing 19, 20 minutes a night? And, and if that's something that's going to be an option or not, that's going to be interesting to watch. Let's talk about the other participants here and what what might be possible. You guys know how I felt about Dylan Holloway. I was <laughs> wondering if he would be able to take a run at you know putting some pressure on somebody for opening night in the playoffs. Had a good night tonight. Again, opponents in mind, three points. Bunch of guys had nice nights points-wise. But Struds, what have you seen from Holloway? And has your mind changed at all about whether he might be able to put pressure on a Yanmark or a, you know even a Carrick, right, yeah. if Yanmark can play in the middle? Made a nice little pickup today down to Wayne Sports Cards and picked myself up 42 Holloway rookies. Okay. I, I've, I've, they're currently on <laughs> Kijiji. It's so hard to intro that in an unbiased, just like, let's they're, talk about it kind of way. I currently just... ha- I have them up on Kijiji. I bought them for one price. I'm up 20%. If I sell them all, we're, guys, we're going somewhere nice. Um, so I'll, I'll say this. <laughs> I don't think tonight's game, I would take anything out of this game because it was such a poor team. Um, so I'd still start with the veterans going into game one. Hmm. Bounty? I agree. I agree. And you, you said push. Yeah, they're not pushing Yanmark out of the lineup. Yanmark is as solid as any other player on the team. They love Yanmark. They love what he brings. He would have to be a Carrick coming out, Carrick and Ryan, because Yanmark is their safety. They love him. They, they trust him. So he wouldn't be coming out of the lineup. And then you're putting him all the way on the fourth line. What's he do for you on the fourth line? Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing. Do you want to put him in your top nine? Fine. Well, then you better find someone in your top nine to bump down there. So, but if he's in your in your fourth line, it's a waste having him out there because he's going to get six minutes because he doesn't kill or on the power play. And the Oilers' fourth line gets about five, six minutes of five-on-five five time in a hockey game. So... Uh, I, I agree with Struts. He's, I go with my veteran lineup, that what brought me here, um, and then go from there. I mean, everything I, – I mean, no one knows what's up with Kane, if it's day-to-day or if it's something that's going to linger into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But um, I just – again, to, to me, it was just a throwaway game, just an absolute throwaway game. There's nothing you learned about this game 
other than that we're really good against American Hockey League teams because that's what they played tonight. Brownie, what do you like in the middle on the fourth line? Is it opponent based at all? Does it matter, or do you go ten or I, do you go three? I like Carrick. I like Carrick because like he's tough. He's got toughness. I mean, I like I like a little bit of sandpaper in my fourth line. If you're playing Vegas, I want Vegas has got big defense and. Eight. Hey, you want to get in and be physical on those defensemen, and Carrick can bring that. They went out and got Carrick because he's a right-handed guy that can win face-offs, and he plays with edge. Well, Vegas is a team you want to play with edge against. That's the team that knocked you out last year. So, for me, Carrick's my fourth-line center. Strud's you? Me too. And it feels like they're heading towards a Vegas, right? I think that's... I think that's who they're going to play. And honestly, guys, I, I I want that matchup for the Oilers. So I think it's Carrick. It's uh, you know I think Dylan Holloway could get some action there. And and I'll say this about Dylan: I really like the way his game's looking. Like he's holding on to the puck more, making more plays, and puck protection. I I'm mm -hmm. seeing a couple of nice hits. I that I love that about his game. I just don't know if he's going to be a regular fixture in this lineup uh, into into the playoffs. But yeah, that's a long way of saying Sam Carrick. Yeah, and I, I probably would go that way as well. Maybe a little bit opponent-based. I do think Ryan has a little bit better speed than Carrick. I think Ryan is sure. skating better this year than he was last year. And uh, I'll be interested to see when playoff pace hits, you know, how Carrick does with that. But love the aggressiveness, love the toughness, love, you know, the physicality and all those things. Uh, Derek Ryan can be pretty crafty sometimes too. So it'll be interesting to see if, if Ryan can keep himself yeah in the conversation well, despite it, the added depth he'll have a role to play like there's there's no yeah. doubt he's going to play this isn't a guy that's going to be just put into the cupboard and not and forgotten all right time now for brownie points hey brought to you by hamel's premium jerky strutty's been looking forward to this all day if you are looking for a snack to bring to the next watch party look no further than hamel's beef jerky oh locally owned here in alberta in alberta <clears throat> excuse me Shipping is so fast, you can satisfy that savory craving. 14 flavors to choose from. Available in bison, turkey, pork, and prime Alberta beef. And they got a special on three pounds of jerky for 85 bucks and free shipping. Go to albertajerky.com to order yours. Brownie, start doling out the points, buddy. Well, in a 9-2 victory on fan appreciation night, there's only going to be Points given out. There's no points being taken away. Brownie points. I'm giving Ooh. 53 brownie points to Connor McDavid because it took 53 seconds for the National Hockey <laughs> League to see how badly he was missed as he scored 53 <laughs> seconds into yeah. the game. So he gets 53. I've got 18 brownie points for Zach Hyman because it had to be Zach Hyman that scored the goal for the 100th assist. Those two have been magic all season long. Zach Hyman finishes, Connor McDavid passes, so Hyman gets 18 brownie points. I have 19 brownie points for Adam Henrique. He gets the opportunity to play with the world's greatest player. He makes no mistake. One goal, two assists, three points, plus four, and 70% in the face-off dot. I have one, what is it, 83 Ooh. brownie points. For the line of 55, 71, and 90, they want to play in game 83 together. That line oh. was the best line for the Edmonton Oilers today. Now, I don't know if Holloway plays there, but the way they, that line played tonight, they're like, you know what, coach? Look what we can do in game 83 of the season. And last but certainly not least, 104 brownie points to Connor McDavid. He is the fourth player in the history of this incredible <laughs> league to get 100 assists in a season uh, or Gretzky, Lemieux, and McDavid. One day we'll be talking about the night we saw Connor McDavid join that group. Wow, that was a study. That was a generous serving of brownie points tonight. Plus, that was a lot. Yeah, you must have had a, you know, extra popcorn upstairs watching the game tonight. <laughs> we'll have to, we're going to keep a bit of a scoreboard here. Um, I don't know. We'll figure out a system. To figure out, I know I'm losing. I'm still 55 minus 55, which has me in dead last by a mile. Uh, Brownie, you might have given a few more to Struds if you'd have heard one of his first lines of the show. Um, talking about how bad the San Jose Sharks were, 
Struddy uttered the phrase, that was a thrashing of orgasmic proportions. <laughs> Nailed it. Are you talking about San Jose with that? <laughs> uh, that's going into our Hall of Fame, though. That's uh, that's going into our Hall of Fame. All right. Uh, that was uh, Brownie Points brought to you by Hamel's Beef Jerky. Brownie, thanks, my friend. We'll uh, We'll chat with you in a couple of days, buddy. Sounds good, guys. Take care. Good All job. right, that was Rob Brown. Uh, when we come back, we still got we got Strutty's World. We've got Take a Lap. We'll look at uh, what's going on around the standings in the National Hockey League. It's going to be a tight finish right to the very end. And then Strutty's World. Ask us anything as well. Stay with us. Okay, heroes, are you trying to tough it out through a sports or life injury right now? Trying to prove your mettle by grinding through, gritting your teeth? Well, Redefined Health is here to say it's time to come on in. At Redefined Health, they'll high-five you for your toughness and then get to work on helping you fix the problem. Helping athletes and heroes find better balance, performance, and injury prevention, visit RedefinedHealth.com. Spring is here, and if you're thinking of buying a new home during the housing market hot period, contacting a mortgage broker should be your first step. Maria Gallus with Maxwell Mortgages can guide you with a stress-free experience. With access to dozens of different lenders, Maria's simplistic approach and expert advice will have you ready to put an offer in on your dream home. Take the stress out of your mortgage journey. Contact Maria Gallus at mortgagesbymaria.ca. That's mortgagesbymaria.ca. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here, someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Guy look good. <laughs> time now for strutty's world brought to you by dlr vinyl products they got locations in calgary and in edmonton if you're a contracting business or a contractor let dlr help you add vinyl fence to your product line see why dlr has been going strong since 2005 reliable unmatched service high quality north american made products just high quality stuff you put it in stays in stays nice no painting sanding staining none of that visit dlr vinyl products dot ca strutty what are we doing tonight we going we going hockey heavy you know you're gonna extol some of your <laughs> hockey brilliance yeah. on us tonight i feel like it'd be a perfect night for you to just bring the intelligence bud uh, i i I can guarantee no one's going to accuse me of intelligence after this one, but I, I try to go out of my way to not talk about how great I am at certain things. I think there's a lot of things I have the talented. I've never talked about this one and I realized that I've, I've, I've actually known for a while. I've just never brought it up. I often go to the, to the grocery store and I tend to get the fruit. My wife does a lot of it, but I, I tend to get the fruit and I have an uncanny ability of picking the right large navel oranges time in and time out. My wife will come back and you guys know what I'm talking about. Sometimes the large navels, they're dry. You peel that back, it comes back really easy. It's like a peanut. It's just the, the fruit inside is shrunk. You can shake it around. It's easy to get it off. Dry as a bone. You have to add water. I don't want to add water to my la large navel oranges. Then there's others that are so ripe and they're just, it's just falling all over the place, squirting in the eye. It's unbelievable. It's not what you want. But I can reach over. There can be a hundred large navel oranges on the display, and I have the ability to touch it. It's like it's like uh, it's it's a skill. It's a it's a feeling I have. I just grab it. I can tell where it's at. Bring it to the bag. And I'm honestly, guys, I'm probably eighty nine percent correct in picking out large navel oranges. Now I don't know if there's a championship for this. I don't know if there's any kind of any way I can get you know honored for this and go into the world you know a record book. But guys, I'm not sure if you ever have anything you can pick, but when it comes to picking this beautiful fruit, I am uncannily great at grabbing the right ones from my family. Interesting. Interesting. Steve, jump in here, bud. We definitely got to get another, another shopper's perspective on this. Isn't there a tell, though, Struds? Like different fruits or vegetables have a tell. So what what is the tell in the navel orange world? Well, number one is you don't want to really lose skin. That's, that's it. You don't want the old turkey neck right you want right. to have it so it's pretty tight but then you don't want it so tight because then it's overripe and there's again squirting you all over in the eye it's just not gonna happen so it's it's a fine balance color i think color makes a difference i don't want to give that away because i don't want other people stealing them from there but <laughs> i we consume a lot of navel oranges in our house steve apparently 
And I, I love them. They're my favorite fruit. Uh, well, maybe not my favorite, but that top three. You ever, you ever uh, grab the right uh, fruit off the shelf? <laughs> I feel like a navel orange now. We don't have a lot of oranges in our house. We're an apple family for sure. I am oh, proud okay. of my apple selection. I will say that. Apples and cats probably, eh? <laughs> I'm not... Uh, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not uh, dedicated to one type of apple. Um, okay. I'll take whatever right. looks the best at the at the time. Um, I am proud of that. I'm proud of my strawberry selection. That's oh, wow. a big strawberry family too. Whoa, 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 whoa! Go ahead. You can't get any credit for strawberry. They come in clear no, containers. They come in big clear containers. You don't know what's and going no on. But on this them. is what Strutty said. Can just, can just look at no. it and see. Is it no, green and you, fuzzy no. or not? You see four of them on the top. You see maybe six of them on the top. You yeah. pick it up. You look at the bottom. You see the ones that are in the inside. Look when you get home, that's when you know you've done a good job. Yeah. And when look you do the, the initial bottom. touch, just like Strud says, you're yeah, attracted to the right, to the right think container. I he gets credit for picking good strawberries. That's fine. That's not the same thing. You're basically using x-ray vision to gaze through the orange skin into the guts of the orange. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, I know. It's, so it's not as hard. I think strawberries, if you look down, you can see they're soft on the bottom. You move on. You put that one back in front. You pick the next one out. But not Laura. Uh, the, the navel oranges. It have to, It's a feel. I don't know how to explain it. It's just. It's like blessings. Like the Pope blessing something. Just feel it. Put your hand on that navel orange. Uh, okay. Bobo Fett says Struddy, elite navel gazer. That's good, actually. <laughs> That's good. That is pretty funny. Because yeah. at the beginning of the segment, you talked about how you're not a navel gazer. How I don't like to toot my own horn a lot. Which <laughs> oh bullshit, by the way. <laughs> Uh, I love how you started that one with a flat out lie. Um, M. Materi says, Southside Edmonton, we are rocking nice oranges. That better, is true. Better oranges on one side of the city than the other? Well, I, I only buy in one area, so I don't know. I'm happy with the orange selection we have down here. Chubby Stubbs says, Strud's wife sends them to the fruit to keep them away from the tomato soup. <laughs> Budget can't handle three cans a meal with no milk mixed in. <laughs> my heart, my heart can't take it. My sodium level. <laughs> it's gonna take years to work that out. <laughs> I did have one of our sponsors send me a picture of a tomato soup emptied into a bowl right out of the can. Oh, it's not good. And like it was still round. It still held the shape of the can. And his 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 caption was, Who thinks you're supposed to eat this? I trust me. I it was hard work. I've had so many people talk to me about it. And they're like, How did you do that? I'm like, what I do is that I thought it was just stiff. So I'd kind of mix it up a little bit, flat it out, then place it in there to warm it up or put it into a into the into a like a on the pan or into a yeah a, 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 I guess a bowl or whatever and heat it up. It was it was tough, man. That's why I got to eat all the navel oranges. Try to suck that sodium. Out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, by the way, speaking of sodium, man, Tom Gazzola sitting next to me tonight. Went and got himself some popcorn, and I'm not food shaming, right? I, yeah, I had a piece of pizza tonight. This isn't food shaming, like that he's eating popcorn. Struds, he emptied two packets of ketchup flavoring. Into oh, his oh, popcorn, not... it yeah. was bright red. Yeah, and he's he powered his way through that thing in the third period, man. And like, I hope he's downing like eight gallons of water yeah. tonight to make up for all that MSG. I had never seen anything like it. This is that the problem. The bigger problem is his red fingers, yeah. right? That's that you know you yeah. go and maybe meet someone you're trying to do an interview and you got the red digits. Yeah, that's unprofessional, Thomas. <laughs> I don't know if anybody was uh, tuning in over at Edmonton Sports Talk today, but let us know if, if Gaz had the uh, fluorescent red fingers going. All right, that was Struddy's World, brought to you by DLR Vinyl Products. Quick break, right, Steve? Then we're back with uh, Take a Lap and you Ask betcha. Us Anything. All right, quick break. We'll be right back. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top-of-the-line track van simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full-service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z dot C-A. 
For over 60 years, Belvedere Golf and Country Club has been delivering a high-quality golf experience to Edmonton and area. This beautiful private club located on Highway 21 just south of Sherwood Park occupies 160 acres and presents a challenging yet adventurous 18-hole design. A beautiful clubhouse, fully stocked pro shop, and warm, friendly staff truly make it feel like you belong to something unique and special. Visit www.belvederegcc.com. The Brindley family has made it their mission to create the best tasting flavor rums on the planet, and they've knocked it out of the park with their shipwreck rums. Brewed off the small Caribbean island of St. Kitts, their spice drum is aged four years in bourbon barrels and infused with natural vanilla. Their shipwreck vanilla is blended with natural Madagascar vanilla, giving it an incredible smoothness. One sip and you'll agree, it truly is a vacation in a bottle. Available at your local liquor retailer. Please enjoy responsibly. All right, time for us to take a couple of laps. Brought to you by Backscape, the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. And it's even better with their Backscape 2.0. New friction fit handle allows you to effortlessly snap the shaver in and out to touch up the rest of your body. The new titanium shave head gives a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. They've done a real nice job here with this 2.0 product. I like the original Backscape, but this one, it just, it feels a little more premium and really works well go to backscape.com that's b-a-k-scape.com and use the promo code gyb10 and that'll get you 10 percent off your first order of any of the kits on their website backscape stay smooth and gentlemen Strutty, where are we starting my friend well something i think impacts the empton orders uh, thatcher demko gonna play his first game in 14 he's missed 14 games at tomorrow against the calgary flames so he gets back and he'll have I'm guessing he'll play both games. I don't know that for sure. I'm guessing uh, to get back on track. He talked about how, you know, he still stayed focused and kind of played games in his head to kind of stay mentally sharp. Um, but I, I believe this it's 14 games is quite a while. It's, it's quite a while. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, you know, anyone who's playing against him will probably have a better chance of derailing him in the first round than they will in the second round. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, missing that much time right before you get going when it matters as much as it matters, you know, you kind of need you need to have a pretty good amount of experience, I think, to overcome something like that. He's a really good goalie, man. Like a really yeah. good goalie for them. Yeah. And it's going to be fascinating to see. This Canucks team, but I don't know what to make of it. I've never seen a team kind of go wire to wire near the top of a division the way they have and just have so few people actually believing in them, including yeah. their fan base. Yeah. Well, that's the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's their best player when he's, when he is, when he's playing at his level, he is their best player. Um, they have, they have a lot of wild cards, right? A lot of inexperience. Um, some players I don't totally believe in as, as playoff performers, but it'll be interesting to see. Like, I think this LA Vegas thing is really interesting. Who, which, who plays who? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have to still really, I'm decided how I'll handicap their first series. Depends who they play. Now, I know you want to get into the standings. Let's hop off of Vancouver here real quick. They got two games left. They're four points back at Dallas. Do, can they still catch the stars here uh, for first in the conference? Uh, I'm just uh, taking a look because Dallas has one game left and they're at 111 points. The Canucks yeah. have two left at their 107. So they can finish with 111 if Dallas loses their last game. Mm -hmm. And then what are the head to heads again? Is it, uh, da, 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 is where's it, the tiebreaker? Is it, re is it regulation it. wins? Uh, fewer number of, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, regulation. Yeah. Greatest number of games won, excluding games in overtime or shootout. So they'd be tied again because they'd both have 51. But listen, I, I, I think it's unlikely that they catch the stars. I do. I think the stars will find a way to get one point or, yeah i don't know i just yeah so yeah i mean you're right because it could have a difference on who they play yeah uh, meanwhile in the other conference whew. yeah and that's where i want to go it is if if you didn't i, I so i i watched the winners game that i was i had on the i was trying to watch the same time detroit and uh montreal montreal got up and detroit comes back uh lucas raymond scores to tie it up with you know not much time left mm -hmm. then he scores in overtime and the place was nice. going crazy Absolutely yeah. crazy. So that means right now, the second wild card spot, 
You have Washington with one game left at 89 points. Detroit, same number of points, same number of games. Uh, you got Pittsburgh, same number of games, 88 points. And Philly, 87 games. So, sorry, 87 points. So, theoretically, four different teams are going into their last game with a chance to get that last spot. Not all is going to present its chance, but they all have a chance. So, crazy, crazy going things going on for that second wild card spot out east. Yeah, it is nuts. I don't ever recall being this late in the season where we didn't know more than a couple of matchups. Like, yeah. What do we know? Two matchups? Well, what do you know? You care, isn't it Carolina and Islanders? I think we know that, don't we? Um, oh boy, you have to go run through all of this and do yeah. the math. So yeah, I, I might. You know, Winnipeg, yeah. Colorado. We know we're just not sure where yet. We don't know where that one's going to yeah. start. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So that that needs to be figured out a little bit. But it's it's great drama. And the thing I wonder about Detroit, it's twice in the last I don't know a few days here that it has been dramatic. The fashion right. in which they have basically saved their season dramatic yeah. struts and i i don't know like do you want to face that team in the first round if they get in on a wing on a prayer by herculean efforts and comebacks do you want to face that team in the first round there's a bit of a like a cinderella feeling going on there you know if they make it happen it feels like they have a bit of a youthful um exuberance to their game right that they don't really understand what the hell's going on <laughs> you know yeah. like you look at like the other night in toronto i think they were up three nothing and then they end up at the, got that toronto came back then they won in overtime then tonight down to montreal now they play montreal again can he beat the same team twice now the game will be in montreal and it's there's it's a great feeling trying to be the spoiler trust me you're trying to kick someone in the nuts so i don't know i i just know that i think this is really healthy for the game when you have this many teams competing for one spot uh, down to the last game keeps all those fan bases in, in, in invested, and then even people in other markets like I'll be watching that, seeing what's going on, checking the scores uh, as as we work through those nights. Carolina and the Islanders, I think, are locked in. Uh, Leafs and Panthers, I think, uh, same thing there. Um, but lots to be determined uh, in a little bit in the little bit in the West, and uh, quite a bit to be determined out in the East. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see. Um, and, and just for clarification, Vancouver does have the tie break struts. They got the more, more regulation wins on Dallas. So if Dallas yeah. drops their last game, and the Canucks finish strong. The Canucks actually have something to play for here, right? They, they do. So. Yeah, they do. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I, I think it's unlikely they passed Dallas, but it, it is possible, right? I think it's possible. And, and again, it could change everything up if they do now it everything shuffled again, you know, it's, yeah. and then if Vegas is able to, and, and so Kings lost a big one tonight to Minnesota. So they have one game left um, and against, I think, Chicago, whereas Vegas has two at home against Chicago and Anaheim. So I think it's likely that they pass uh, the Kings. So that would put the Oilers in that spot unless they're able to catch Vancouver, who aren't able to win, to pass Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Does that uh, all make the sense? Stars, <laughs> the Stars have St. Louis uh, in their last game, and that one is set to go on Wednesday. Oilers got some tough scheduling here at the end of the year, hey? Oh, brutal. Back-to-backs you know, -back to end, on the road, and then maybe Ra starting a couple of days later. Like that's Rangers finished tonight. Rangers, the President's Trophy winners, I should mention that, they won it, and they played tonight their last game. Monday. Yeah. Monday. The Oilers finished Thursday. Two on the road. It's like it's crazy. I think the Predators are done. Like I think there's three or yeah. four teams now that have yeah. that have finished crazy. up, which is crazy. bizarre. Yeah. And we talked nice. about this. That there'd be a price to pay for that lighter schedule they had earlier. What was that? I want to say January, February. I recall you talking about yeah. that. Yes, you did. It's yes, you did. All right. That was taking a lap. Brought to you by Backscape. Uh, Steve, we're rolling right through. Right. No, no commercial break. No yet? more. No more ads. That's right. All right, how long have we been? 63 minutes. We got time to give away a hat quick. You want to do that or do you Let's have that ready, it. Steve? Or we yeah, can we can wait course. and do that next part. Yeah, you got time? Boom. Okay, Struds, I'll intro this, buddy. You think of a quick trivia question for us. Sorry okay. to put you on the spot, but yeah. I know you love your quick and easy trivia. Uh, and our hat giveaway, our got your back hat, is brought to you by our good friends over at DeBoer's Golf Shop and fitting center aiming to help you play better golf with golf fitting instruction after sales support merchandising and clothing celebrating 25 years check out their pro shop style atmosphere located at 5311 99th street in edmonton have you ever had a uh, club fitting struts have you yes. ever gone in and actually gone through that process oh yeah it's pretty cool, man. It is, the, yeah. You learn things about your game, right? So I went sure. in there and uh, had an appointment, went in and saw Scott and TJ helped out too. 
and they take you through your whole game, hit different clubs, figure out what works, figure out what doesn't. So the five iron is out of my bag now. The seven wood is in. Adjusted a couple of wedges here and there. But I'm telling you, I'm fired off. The game is going to be in oh, good shape. God. I got my grandma seven wood in there, bud. Jeez, I'll enjoy it. Enjoy it. We're, you're not when we play. You're not allowed to have that in your bag. The seven wood. Oh, jeez, oh, it's embarrassing. I stripe this thing, buddy. You're going to be amazed. Senior shaft, probably too, right? Eh? <laughs> uh, okay, Strutty's going to hit us with a trivia question. You send your answer to us. Go to gybpod.com and click on gyb swag. And then uh, give us your answer. Then you can pick it up at DeBoer's along with $25 in store credit. So, Struddy, what's our last second trivia question, buddy? 100 assists in a season is incredible. But what is the all-time record for most assists in a single season? Ooh, I like it. The record for most assists in a single season. GYBpod.com is our website. Click on GYB swag. And then you can submit your answer there. If you get it right, you'll go into a draw. And if you get an email from us, you've won one of our fabulous Got Your Back hats that Steve Taylor is uh, currently modeling. Steve, let's see that one. What did you go with tonight, bud? What do you got on there? You got Sorry, the I, had to move the, to the, I had to move to, <laughs> to the next screen. Yeah, I got the blue That's with the okay. orange. Blue yeah. with the orange fist, the orange fist. There, yeah. I get Looking compliments sharp. on this. Um, yeah, just tonight I was at the rink with my son and a dad said oh that's that's where i recognize you from because <laughs> he listens to the oh, really? podcast and he saw the hat <laughs> so nice. yeah there you that's go that's awesome all right let's wrap up the pod with ask us anything brought to you by the shark of the park rini buclan of maxwell devonshire realty voted the number one individual agent two years in a row that's something just to do once never mind two years in a row and you'll see why she's got great commitment to her clients, real pro services, skilled negotiation as well, and a vast knowledge of Sherwood Park, Edmonton, all the surrounding areas. Give her a call, 780-994-0280. Steve? Okay, yeah, great stream tonight. Uh, CK Pawn, uh, just patting himself on the back, says, beginning of the year, I remember the podcast. Um, I said on a contract here, Fogel was going to score 20. Uh, LOL, this dude's going to get paid this summer. So, yeah. Kudos, CK Pawn for you. He year. gone, Struds. He gone. Oh, he's gone. Yeah. And Dil- <laughs> so Dylan Holly made this move right into his place. Like that's where he's going to be. That's yeah. that's his spot. That's his spot for sure. And good for Vogel, right? Good for him. Yeah. That's you know what. And it, the the trade was a good trade. Ethan Bear for Vogel. It's worked out, right? He's hundred percent. Yep. Uh, Anthony with a question from Twitter said uh, hey, Carolina has the best goal differential in the league at plus sixty six. Oilers are now at plus 64, just two points uh-huh. off. Uh, they were at only 57 before tonight. They were at 50, 60, or sorry, 65 at one point in the game. Uh, do you think they'll take the lead by the end of the season? Two games left. Yeah, uh, the Arizona game, they can run it up a bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, though, Arizona, I think they're playing, like they're, they're kind yeah. of buzzing. Like they're, 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 yeah. they're, they're showing signs of life. Um, and probably they're la- like, there's going to be emotion because it's their last, that's their last game. I believe, is it not last game? I think. Yes. Yeah. So I, th- I think that there'll be some emotion going it's through that by group. You. Yep. So, so you know what? I, th- they, they, they may, the others may, but I don't think it really matters. I think that whether you're one, two or three, uh, there's, it's not a big difference, but if you're 30, we got a problem. By the way, a footnote on that goal differential. Struds, you want to guess at what the Sharks are? Don't look at it if you've got <laughs> oh, it in front God. of you. Goal I differential. Saw. What would you guess? I, 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 I don't even know. It's got to be over at minus 100, no? Minus 146. Uh, so so <laughs> ugly. Awesome. Did you see terrible. Quinn on the bench? Like He looks like he's he just can't get out of there fast enough. Like yeah, it's, sure. it's awful. Steve? Okay, Materi says, hey, at some point, did we just quit scoring like Pee Wee Rep? <laughs> and Struds, I know you can empathize with this too. At some point in the game, you just sort of say, okay, guys, that's enough. Three passes before you score or defense are yeah. playing forwards, forwards are playing defense. Yeah. But, you know, in a game like this, um, obviously you're trying to, you know, be a little more conservative. And, uh, but, you know, are you, you're, you're still trying to score goals, Yeah. I don't think they're trying their hardest in the third. I think one guy was. Warren Fogel. One guy was. Yeah, <laughs> Fogel was trying hard for everybody. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not judging for that. Like, I get it. No, I completely get it. Deal. But I think that, you know, you you laid a beating on him for two periods. There's no way they were coming back. Um, you lost the shutout bid, or there was no shutout bid or whatever. So I think you're just – then you're just like, okay, let's just get through this here, and we don't have to embarrass these guys anymore. 
Um, Freezer Bag says Kane, Perry, and Henrique will be huge in the playoffs. Thoughts on just what those guys are going to bring to the playoffs this year? I, and it, will it be dramatically different from the regular season, like a lot of people on the stream are thinking? Um, expectations for those for those guys, Struts. Well, I like all three. I, I, I've got time for all three. I don't know if I want to. I did want them all on the line. I don't know which series you'd have those three guys on line together. It's because it's it's not the f the they're not, not flying out enough. there. Yes, they're not flying. I don't think you're playing um, them together. But yeah, I mean, I I I think we saw it one game, didn't we? I think it, no. there's been so many combos. But anyways, I think they're all going to find a way to contribute. And Henrique, he just continues to go to the, the net. I think I saw a quote from Corey Perry. He's like. I was told that I, I didn't play a good game. I don't have blue paint on my skates. And I, mm. and those are all, and Kane's been going to that too. So they're going to find a way to contribute offensively. Um, and then for sure, the wingers are going to find a way to be irritating. Last one, Steve. Okay. Fun one from Quaddy. He says, what's your most satisfying, your most personally satisfying cup path opponents? For him, it's first round Vegas, second round Vancouver, third round Colorado, and the cup final would be against the Leafs. What's your guys' uh, most satisfying cup path? Yeah, I'm not a fan. I, I don't really care. I don't know. Strud, do you have a preference? What yes, do you think? those three, he nailed it. Yeah. He absolutely, Quadri absolutely nailed it. I agree. And then the last one, Toronto just be spiteful, but I believe I want to play against the New York Rangers. So you win New York, and like it's just something about playing there and beating that team there. Um, because I, I, could, I don't think there's a chance in hell Toronto gets to the Stanley Cup final. Yeah, well, given that I'll probably get to travel to the Stanley Cup final, I'm going to say that personally satisfying, I hope the Oilers beat the Florida Panthers in, uh, in the <laughs> Stanley a long, Cup final. a lot of traveling. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit of a travel hike, but that's okay. Yeah. It's a nice spot wire. Though, Toronto's a direct flight, though, so that's, yeah. There's nobody, Toronto, look at their goalies. You really think they're going to win with Samsonoff? Jones. No, I'm not Paul. talking about any hockey logic at all. I'm just thinking oh. where I want to spend the okay. time right now. All right. So, sorry that I was yeah. sorry all over you. Toronto would be the quicker flight. Yeah, that's tough. Florida's nice, though. I'll go Florida. Why not? We'll make it Florida. Yeah. yeah. Throw all a right. little uh, now, Nashville in there in the meantime, right? Vegas. Yeah, Nashville's <laughs> always fun, man. Yeah. Nashville's yeah. always fun. Who knows with them? They could be sneaky. That was Ask Us Anything brought to you by Rini Buclan, the shark of the park. As we wrap up the pod, let's get to our play of the day, courtesy Play Alberta. Hit the ice this season with Play Alberta and hundreds of player props. Deposit today with the code GYB50 and get a $50 free bet. And remember, if you gamble, use your game sense. Visit playalberta.ca. I've got a good one in mind, Struds, but I'm interested for a guy that says he doesn't call his own number if you had planned on that tonight. No, no, I was going to give it to I think the story of the night is Conor McDavid's 100 assists, and I loved how when Brownie points, Brownie said 104 points for Conor McDavid for being one of four players to get 100 assists in one year. Yep, no question. It involves Connor McDavid. You know what, though? I'm going to give an honorable mention to Zach Hyman. I think the fact that Zach Hyman shoved him yeah. through that handshake line at his own nice. bench uh, was pretty awesome. Pretty classy by McDavid not to want to over-celebrate. Definitely appropriate for Zach Hyman to go, no, 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 Connor. We're celebrating this one. <laughs> uh, and that just, I think that says a lot about both guys. So that was your play Alberta play of the day struts thanks buddy we'll chat with you in a couple of days yeah good times wednesday love it all right go eat yourself a nice soft supple easy to peel orange buddy as a good <laughs> time <laughs> snack. thank you navel Steve, good job my friend thanks boys that was a fun one all right thanks to all of you for joining us on the live stream here on youtube or on twitter or if you're consuming us in podcast form much appreciate your downloads and your subscriptions. Looking forward to getting the playoffs going. We'll drop at least one more pod this week before we uh, get the playoff preview done and get rocking and rolling in round number one. Big thanks as always to all of our sponsors, but of course our presenting sponsor, our title sponsor, Sherwood Buick GMC. Have a great night, everybody. Talk soon.